Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to Life of Palos, home of the most immaculate beard in automotive YouTube. Happy to have you here. And a real quick note here before we begin, guys. I've seen in my comments over the past couple weeks in particular that all of a sudden there's like at least 20 to 30 plus comments about my beard every day we do a video. Now, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I sort of revel in the hilarity of that particular comment, but I was actually thinking maybe we could do like a limited run of I'm here for the beard shirts or a hat or something like that. Let me know what you guys think about that like the video or comment below or something like that and if there's some sort of demand for it we'll do it let me know that being said guys we have one of the craziest episodes uh, I've done in at least the last six months today uh, all three of our headline stories are just absolutely bananas if you're a first-time viewer to my channel congratulations you picked a really good video to watch so where to begin we're actually gonna start with uh, well the royalty exotics YouTube channel run by Houston Crosta we've actually talked about them over the course of the last couple weeks they've been putting out a bunch of great content and sadly, some of their content, like we talked about at the time, had to do with uh, some unfortunate mishaps that occurred with their Royalty Exotics fleet. People crashing different Lamborghinis, and in one particular instance, their green Lamborghini Aventador catching fire. So one of the reasons why we talked about the Royalty Exotics channel so much over the last couple weeks is because Las Vegas in particular has been hit very, very hard from the global pandemic that we're all dealing with. And the shutdown of the Las Vegas Strip has impacted businesses in a pretty incredible way Houston Crosta hit absolutely uh, with his royalty exotics business. So he's been chronicling all of that stuff and in the midst of all that, uh, like we talked about a second ago, his green Aventador caught fire. He did an entire video on it, monster video, mega views, and that actually gets us to today's story, which is Houston Crosta's channel, the Royalty Exotics YouTube channel, has been hit with a copyright strike and he is banned and suspended from doing videos for the next week. So the circumstances of the strike, uh, as far as I've been told, are absolutely insane. And I'm gonna relay it to you guys because I was able to talk to Houston Crosta about what exactly happened. You're gonna be kind of baffled by this for sure. So apparently after the Lamborghini Aventador, the green one that Houston Crosta owns for Royalty Exotics, went up in flames, someone took a picture of that. That picture was used in the local news and some other YouTuber videos, all that kind of stuff. And apparently Houston Crosta put this particular picture of his own car in the video that he talked about the Lamborghini Aventador going up in flames. And according to Houston, the person that that took the picture, told Houston it was copyrighted material and that Houston owed him money for usage of his own car going up in flames. Houston said he wasn't gonna pay for that, so the guy sent a copyright strike over to YouTube, and that's what got Royalty Exotics banned for one full week from doing anything. Now, I wanna make sure I said that that's all according to Houston because I wanna make sure I don't get myself into any sort of legal trouble or copyright issues within YouTube. No, I'm not gonna be showing you the photo here or anything like that because no, I don't wanna get a copyright strike too. But I have to say this, guys, and, and you know, I, I don't often interject my opinion within something like this, but I gotta tell you, like, it seems extraordinarily insensitive to see someone's car on fire. Take a picture of that particular said car on fire and then essentially tell the owner that you're going to not allow them to use a picture of their own car on fire and that you're going to copyright strike their channel unless you give them money. Maybe one of the most insensitive things I've ever heard about uh, in the automotive community coming forward right now. So no, we're not gonna be seeing anything from the Royalty Exotics channel over the next week and hopefully they can get this appealed by YouTube. I would hope that YouTube would allow for something like this to sort of be reversed in some way. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. It is a little bit of a trickier situation uh, beyond the surface element of it, but I can't imagine ever doing something like this to another creator or somebody else in the automotive community. If I had been the one taking the picture, there's no chance in hell that I would ever charge the owner for usage of that photo, especially considering how awful that event must have been for Houston and the rest of the Royalty Exotics team. Uh, the, the, the whole situation just kind of makes me squirm a little bit. Anyway, we're gonna move on to our next story, guys. Our next story, guys, is actually pretty crazy. Uh, it's actually a little bit baffling to me, too. Uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I'm sure that, uh, you know, our channel among a ton of other channels covered the crazy New York City uh, wreck slash crash of the Gimbala Mirage GT that was driven at the time by Benjamin Chen. Now I'm not going to jump into all the different circumstances of that particular crash. Uh, it was absolutely insane though, covered by pretty much every major automobile outlet for starters because it was during a crazy time in New York City with the pandemic, uh, but also because it was the one of 25 Gimbala Mirage GT. But here's the crazy thing guys, uh, Benjamin Chen is back, known as 
was BC on Instagram. Uh, he was spotted driving a Lamborghini Murcielago. Uh, a, a lot of people commented. I'm not going to get into the comments in particular, but you can imagine what most of the comments said uh, when BC was tagged in these particular posts, driving his Mercy. And I am going to speculate here just a little bit. Uh, it baffles me that, that someone that went through such a crazy ordeal in New York City during a time uh, of pandemic and still has his license, especially considering all the insane crashes that he's had over the past couple years with, with very notable supercars. The Gambala Mirage GT was not the first car that he's wrecked. I believe he wrecked a Mercy SV, uh, an MP412C, and scraped up the bottom of uh, one very, very particular hypercar as well. But what can I say, guys? It seems like he's back driving uh, more Lamborghinis, more crazy cars, and uh, hopefully he can stay safe and uh, not crash something else in the future, I suppose. It's kind of a crazy situation to think how many cars have been crashed and how he's still able to drive. Hard to say, guys. Now, our last headline story for today, guys, is a continuation of something we've actually been talking about uh, over the past couple months in particular, and that has to do with the U.S.-Canada border being closed to non-essential personnel. About a month ago in particular, we talked about the fact that it was going to be closed until around May 21st, but at the time we speculated that this particular day was going to get pushed uh, dramatically further, and that would impact daily driven exotics' ability to come back into the country, and obviously uh, the return of the LA vlogs, like most of you guys are used to seeing. Now, they've been doing a fantastic job with their Canadian content, sort of making the best of a situation and when they're out of their element. But over the last couple days, guys, uh, Trump and Trudeau have decided that they're going to extend the border closure for non-essential personnel uh, until June 21st now. Essentially bringing the hammer down on Daily Driven Exotics travel restrictions. And when I say June 21st, I mean at least June 21st, as it's been stated in numerous articles. Dave and Damon are not able to make it down here. Canada's got them locked up in quarantine or something. I'm not sure what. Now, generally, like I talked about a second ago, guys, I think they've been doing a fantastic job of creating content while they're in Canada. Obviously, their bread and butter for a long time was doing stuff in Beverly Hills, doing stuff in LA, having a bit of fun. A lot of their cars were down there. Obviously, we talked about them selling the Ferrari FF because it was sort of stranded down there. They couldn't get it back up to Canada. But I actually think it's been very good for them to be in Canada and do the content that they've been doing because they've had to get a little bit creative over the course of the last couple weeks being there semi-permanently. So here's my question for you guys. Are you enjoying the Canadian content more so than the LA content? Which of the styles of content are you liking more? And do you want to see them come back to LA or just continue to do stuff in Canada even after the border gets reopened? I'm very curious to know about that because in the early sections, people were like, oh, you know, Canadian content, we want LA back. But then the further they got along the line, the Canadian content seemed to be of a different quality level overall and people really started to enjoy it for what it was in its own right. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think about it and when you think the U.S.-Canada border will actually be reopened for their travel back to the U.S. Next up, guys, Donut Media on everything you need to know about the Ford Raptor. And I'm going to tell you guys to watch this video for kind of a secret reason. For starters, I love Donut Media, but also because uh, a very secret YouTube channel might be getting a Ford Raptor in the near future. No, I can't tell you who it is, and don't say it in the comments if you already know. But yes, very interesting stuff. You might want to get uh, up to speed on what the Ford Raptor is all about because the channel that it's coming to uh, might be exploding very, very soon. Get excited, guys. Shmi is up next, guys, with a crazy story on how he tried to buy back his first car he ever owned and essentially found out it was crashed and the entire story regarding that. One of the coolest things that Shmi has done was sort of crowdsource finding this car and getting the story that he has for you guys today. Go check it out, guys. Shmi making the best of a bad situation pandemic-wise, still coming up with great content. We we've come to expect that from Shmi. Make sure to follow him if you're not. And apparently the pandemic is not slowing down F-Spot at all, doing some incredible car spawning in today's video. You're gonna wanna check this out for sure. A Mercedes 6x6 makes an appearance. There's some incredible Ferrari 488s in there too. You're gonna wanna make sure you check this out. F-Spot is sort of the, I would say he's the OG of supercar spotting and sort of built his entire channel off of it. And he's friends with a lot of very famous YouTubers as well. So every once in a while, you'll see pretty cool cameos if you follow his channel. Check it out, guys. Some awesome cars in his latest video. And although the majority of YouTube is fixed Fixated on the Corvette C8, uh, the Toyota Supra is still making some interesting rounds with TJ Hunt apparently getting a hold of a wrecked Toyota Supra and everything they're going to be doing with that particular car. Obviously, TJ Hunt has the Street Hunter edition of the Supra for himself and that crazy kit that's going around. But if you want to see what a wrecked Supra is all about, TJ Hunt has the fix for you. Next up, guys, Supercar Blondie with a video that I think a lot of you are going to watch. And I have to look at my notes here to make sure I pronounce the car right. It is the, well, it's the fastest Lotus ever, but it's called the Final Evolution. Evolution 311 430. I, I definitely had to look at that because there's no way I was going to remember that for the video. 
out. Make sure to go check it out, guys. Supercar Blondie doing what she does best with insane concept cars and one-offs and all that kind of crazy stuff. Fantastic job on the latest video. Make sure to go check it out if you haven't seen it already. Great stuff. Getting into the sort of the, the weirder stuff for today, uh, a very interesting video from Drive Tribe about when James May, uh, yes, James May, the one that you guys all probably know, met Doug DeMuro and their very interesting conversation that took place after James May roasted Doug DeMuro's Ford GT. Really cool video. Loving what Drive Tribe is putting out with sort of uh, different reactions with James May and all the rest of those great guys uh, talking about different automotive YouTubers. It's a very interesting intersection of, of the car world. If you guys haven't checked this video out, make sure to do so. It's a lot of fun. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for uh, joining in on the fun today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We just hit 200,000 subs. I still have to do our kind of our, our crazy celebration video at some point, but I'm trying to do my best to get you guys supercar community news as fast as we possibly can. So that's still coming, by the way. And thank you guys so much for your support for the channel. I just, I just love what I'm doing here every day. I, I have such a blast filming videos and you guys have been just so incredibly supportive. So thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Stay safe, sane, and healthy out there. And we'll catch you very, very soon. That's all I got. Bye.